Everywhere around us, we see many bodies moving. A speedling car, people walking or running, boats sailing in the river, football rolling on the playground, or a bird in flight. These are all examples of bodies in motion. What is motion? A body is said to be in motion if it changes its position with respect to other objects. The other objects which are not moving are therefore at rest. A body that does not change its position in relation to its surroundings is said to be at rest. When a body is in motion, there is often a need to measure the quality of this motion with respect to time. A body moves faster than the another body if it travels larger distance with the elapse of same time interval. In the same way, there is a need to measure the elapse of time between two events. Many of you board the school bus early in the morning at the bus stops in your colony. While the bus is driving past, the position of bus changes with respect to other objects like trees, houses and lampposts by the roadside. Thus, the bus is said to be in motion as it changes its position relative to the surrounding and with the elapse of time. Children sitting in the bus are in motion relative to houses, trees and other objects on the roadside but they are stationary relative to each other. The terms motion and rest are thus relative terms and are dependent on who and where the observer is. Slow and fast motion. What is the difference between walking and running with respect to time and distance? Walking takes more time to cover a distance. Running takes less time to cover the same distance. In terms of motion, we can say walking is a slow motion whereas running is a faster motion. The distance moved by objects in a given interval of time can therefore help user to decide which object moves faster than the other. We refer to it as speed. Speed Distance travelled by an object in a unit time is called speed. The SI unit is meter per second or m per s. Other units like kilometer per hour is also commonly used. Speed is a scalar quantity as it has magnitude only. It does not mention the direction of motion. Speed is equals to distance travel by time taken or V is equals to S by T. Different objects move with different speed. A bicycle moves at slow speed. A car moves faster whereas an aeroplane moves fastest. So the speed of aeroplane is the highest as it can cover a particular distance in the shortest span of time. We can define speed as the ratio of distance covered to the time taken by a moving body. Measurement of speed. Speed is measured as distance traveled in unit time. Popularly, it is miles per hour, kilometers per hour. When the speed is more, the time is conveniently reduced as speed of sound in air is 330 meter per second. Speed of light is 3 into 10 raised to power 10 centimeter per second. Calculation of speed. The distance between Delhi and Jaipur is 250 km. A car takes 5 hours to complete the distance. Calculate the speed of the car. Given, distance travelled by the car is equals to 250 km. Time taken to cover from Delhi to Jaipur is equals to 5 hours. Therefore, speed is equals to distance travelled by time taken equals to 250 by 5 equals to 50 km per hour equals to 50 into 5 by 18 equals to 13.89 meter per second. To convert speed in kilometer per hour to meter per second, you can multiply the answer in kilometer by hour by 5 by 18. Since 1 kilometer is equals to 1000 meter, 1 hour is equals to 3600 seconds. Therefore, 1 km per hour is equals to 1000 meter per 3600 seconds equals to 5 by 18 meter per second. Uniform and non-uniform speed. Uniform speed. The speed of a body is said to be uniform if the body covers equal distance in equal time interval, no matter how small these time intervals may be. Suppose a car travels down the road at a constant speed of 10 meter per second. It means that it travels 10 meter in every one second. Non-uniform speed. The speed of a body is said to be non-uniform if it covers unequal distances in equal intervals of time or equal distances in unequal intervals of time. 
In a day-to-day situations, we rarely find cars moving at uniform speed on the road because of heavy traffic, bad roads, and traffic signals. The speedometer and odometer fitted in dashboard of cars, lorry, buses, and other vehicles display the prevailing speed and distance traveled by the vehicle. The speedometer reads the speed directly in kilometer per hour, while the odometer reads the measure of distance moved by the vehicle in kilometer. Average speed. The average speed of a body is the total distance traveled by the body divided by total time taken to cover this distance. While traveling in a car, you may have noticed that it is very difficult to keep the speed of the car uniform because at many places brakes are to be applied to slow down or to stop the car due to various traffic conditions. Average speed is equals to total distance by total time taken to travel that distance. For example, for a car which travels a distance of 120 km in 3 hours, the average speed is 120 by 3 equals to 40 km per hour. This does not mean that the car is moving at this speed all the time. Time Time is the lapse between the regularly recurring events. We give reference of time as past midnight, after lunch break, BC and AD. Human beings have felt the need to keep track of time from ancient times. In olden days, people did not have watches or clocks. They used the various events which repeated regularly to count time interval. They used the time from sunrise to sunset, the length of shadow, one full moon to another full moon, and the change of seasons to measure the interval of time. So, if you hear your mummy saying on a Sunday to a fruit vendor, come next Sunday, she means come after 7 days likewise full moon to full moon is 15 days or a fortnight sundial this was the first clock invented it was used to measure time during ancient times based on decrease and increase in length of shadow during the day the shadow cast by sundial was longer in the morning reduced to nothing during noon and become longer again in the evening hour glass the hour glass uses the flow of sand to measure time It consists of two rounded glass bulbs connected by a narrow neck of glass. The upper bulb contains some sand that streams down into the bottom bulb giving the fixed interval of time. Jantar mantar. This name can be translated as magical device. It was built by Maharaja Jai Singh II. The one at Jaipur Observatory is considered as the largest sundial in the world. Built of local stone and marble, this sundial is 90 feet high. Its shadow is carefully plotted to tell the time of the day. The instrument was also used to observe the movements of sun, moon, other planets and stars. Measurement of time using periodic motion. To measure time, we need a motion that repeats itself at equal intervals. Such a motion is called periodic motion. It was Galileo, an Italian scientist, who first noticed that swinging body was a regular beat and can be used for timing purpose. For example, if you play on a swing, the time it takes to swing from one side to another is constant, whether you play in the morning or afternoon in winter or summer. A process such as this is used to measure time interval. Another significant observation that Galileo made was that the to and fro motion of any pendulum of same length are all of the same duration of time. This principle of periodic motion is used in making clocks and watches. Simple pendulum A simple pendulum may be defined as a heavy point mass called bob, a small brass or lead spare. spended by an inextensible thread from a fixed point and allowed to swing freely under the influence of gravity terms to describe a pendulum 1 length of a simple pendulum the distance l between the point of suspension and the center of the bob 2 oscillation one complete vibrational movement to and fro motion when the bob of the pendulum moves from one position and come back to the same position that is in the given figure from a to c c to b and b to a 3 amplitude the maximum displacement of the bob on either side from its mean position that is from a to c or from a to b ac is equals to ab 4 time period the time taken to complete one oscillation time period depends upon the length of the string from which the bob is suspended greater the length of the pendulum greater will be the time needed for one complete oscillation 
Time period does not depend on the extent to which the bob of the pendulum is displayed, that is, the amplitude, nor on the mass of the bob used. So, for a particular pendulum length, the time period does not change and it is taken as constant. Unit of time Of many repetitive phenomena happening in nature, rotation of the earth on its own axis, which determines the length of the day, has been used as a standard of time. Everyone knows that a day is divided into 24 hours, each containing 60 minutes of 60 seconds each. One mean solar day is equals to 24 hours equals to 24 into 60 minutes equals to 24 into 60 into 60 seconds equals to 86,400 seconds. One second is equals to 1 by 86,400 mean solar day. So the SI unit of time is second. Other commonly used units of time are 1 week is equals to 7 days, 1 year is equals to 365 days, 10 years is equals to 1 decade, 100 years is equals to 10 decades equals to 1 century, 1000 years is equals to 10 centuries equals to 1 millennium. Today, time intervals of smaller fractions of a second can also be measured using electronic or digital display clocks. Some of these clocks can measure time intervals as small as one millionth or even one billionth of a second. For measuring very small intervals of time in the laboratory or in sports, we use stopwatch which can measure accurately up to one by tenth or even one by hundredth of a second. Representation of data on distance time graph. The advantages of representing data on graph paper are 1. Data becomes visual, easy to understand and easy to remember. 2. What a graph states can take pages to explain in writing text. 3. Intermediate conclusions can be drawn. Plotting a graph. Take a sheet of graph paper. You will see that it consists of big squares of 1 cm into 1 cm. These squares are further divided into smaller squares of 1 mm into 1 mm or 2 mm into 2 mm. Now draw two lines at right angle to each other. A horizontal line, OX drawn near the bottom of the graph paper, represents the x-axis while a vertical line, OY drawn at the left end of the graph paper, represents the y-axis. The point of intersection, O of OX and OY is known as the origin O. Graph a pictorial representation of two variables in the form of a straight line or curved line of which one varies as a result of changes in the other variable. The independent quantity is shown along x-axis and the dependent quantity is shown along y-axis. Furthermore, we provide a numeric value for an object location by placing it either in the positive direction, that is, from origin towards right OX for X axis and from origin to upward OY for Y axis or the negative direction by extending XO to the left and YO to downward. The negative figures are then plotted on the extended lines. Choose a scale to represent on the graph. For example, if we have to represent a time duration of 60 minutes, we may take 1 cm equals to 10 minutes. Similarly, 1 cm is equals to 5 km can be represented on y axis. Mark the points of observation on the x and y axis. Now join all the set of values in the graph with a fine pencil. The graph thus plotted represents distance time graph. The adjacent data gives the distance covered by a car in a helitarian over a period of 60 minutes. The reading on the odometer is recorded at an interval of every 10 minutes. The same data can be represented on a bar graph or on a line graph. Bar graph showing distance covered by a car in a hilly terrain over a period of 60 minutes. Zigzag line graph of a car traveling 25 km in a hilly terrain over a period of 60 minutes. Let us compare distance time graphs of cars moving at a uniform speed and non-uniform speed. For every equal time interval of 10 minutes, this car has traveled equal distance of 5 kilometers. For every equal time interval of 10 minutes, this car has traveled unequal distance of 2 kilometer, 4 kilometer, 2 kilometer, 6 kilometer, 10 kilometer, and 6 kilometer respectively. Figure 1 Distance 
time graph showing uniform speed figure 2 distance time graph showing non uniform speed if the distance time graph is a steadily rising straight line figure 1 it indicates that the object is moving at a uniform speed that is it covers same distance in equal intervals of time if the distance time graph is a covered line or a zigzag figure 2 it indicates that the object is moving with a non uniform speed that is it covers unequal distances in equal intervals of time we can also conclude from figure 2 that a change in gradient of the line graph represents change in speed of the car b portion between the change of gradient of the line graph represents uniform speed a distance time graph showing how a car travels for 200 km the gradient of the graph gives the speed of the object between 0 and 10 second the object moved from 0 to 50 km speed is equals to 50 m minus 0 m upon 10 seconds minus 0 seconds is equals to 5 m per second